Good evening. Tonight I want to speak about something which is very dear to my heart, and that is libraries. As you can see, I have a fair number of books up there, most of them on physics and mathematics. But my concern is the library situation in the city of Kawatha Lakes. Now, libraries have been around for a very, very long time. The most famous, of course, is the library in Alexandria, which is two th well would have been 2,500 years old. Now, at that time, the librarian there was uh, a chap who had a big problem because these weren't books, these were scrolls all tied up, and he wanted to catalog them in some particular way. And this meant he had to read them, and they would be in Hebrew, Aramaic, Latin, or Greek, so he knew four languages, he had to read them, he had to give them a name, because many of them did not have names, give them a title, and then try and catalogue them in some sensible way. Now we haven't changed, libraries haven't changed. They still come in author and subject and topic and so on and so forth, and we break them up into sections within a, a library of like mathematics books or physics books, just, just as I do here. So there is no rocket science about this. A library is just a collection of things exactly the same as a hardware store. You need to know where everything is and be able to get at it easily. And that's what a good librarian does. A good librarian knows where the books are, where the CDs are, where the videos are, where the YouTubes, where all the stuff is, and is able to get it to you quickly. But that is being taken over now by a management team in the city of Kawatha Lakes and I want to show you some slides to show you where this has taken us to a very expensive and I think completely appalling situation. So this then is the library fiasco. First I looked at the number of library employees and those are the numbers here. You can see that there are eight people who are in the administrative staff and there are 16.48 branch librarians. Well, naturally, we don't have 0.48 of a librarian. These are what's full-time equivalents. So you take all your part-time librarians and you say, well, how many full-time people would it be? And it's 16.48. But what you immediately notice is that the administrative staff is half the number of branch librarians. So in effect, there is one supervisor, one supervisor for every two full-time equivalent workers. And that is over-management to a level that is completely preposterous. Now let's have a look at the cost. So down here we have the salaries, wages and benefits of the people and it comes to here about 1.4 million. Now you can reckon that the part-time librarians probably take up the 400 odd thousand dollars and the million which is left is paying those eight people's salaries and benefits. So they're doing very well indeed. This figure down here, 2004 dollars, is for contracted services. And that always worries me in the city of Kawatha Lakes, the number of contracted services which they have, which really means that these high-priced individuals are incapable of doing their work and have to bring in other people to help them. Now, I happen to know that this is about right. Uh, those 16.48 full-time equivalents are actually about 29 real people who work in our district libraries. Alright, so here is a diagram taken from the budget plan, which I'd like to go through with you. At the top here, we have the library director at a salary of $130,000. He has an administrative assistant. He has three library specialists. And he has a library specialist who is responsible for outreach and community engagement, whatever that might be, I have no idea, but
but I do know of two and a half thousand years of libraries, we've never had a person like that. Over here, we also have two library coordinators, area coordinators. There's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Those are the eight people in the administration. And what do they have? Well, they all have very nice benefits, high salaries, a good pension, good health benefits. On the other hand, the people down here who share these 24 thousand hours to 29 people they have no benefits and they get something like 18 hours each per week that's about the average and that 18 hours per week is not going to provide enough money to put much food on the table and they receive absolutely no benefits whatsoever no health no pension, nothing. This is absolutely disgraceful. But all our money is poured into the administration, who we never see, and as far as we know, we don't know if they do any work. And these are the people who we meet when we go to our local library, who help us to find our books and CDs and films and so on. These are the frontline people, and they're treated in so a miserable fashion. But as I said, that isn't enough. Because these people in green can't afford, can't actually do their job, so now they bring in $204,000 worth of contracted services. Some of these are professional, some of these are technical. But why can't they do their own work? But we're not done with this slide yet. Because they just asked for another manager to be added to the library staff at a cost of $115,000 a year. Library director and a manager taking home between them a quarter of a million dollars a year. That's an awful lot of books. What do we get from these highly qualified people? What do we get for the over a million dollars in salaries and benefits for eight people? and more than that for nine if they do in fact employ this manager. Well, I'll tell you what we get. We get centralizing of power in Lindsay, which is an overriding characteristic of the city of Coatha Lakes. They do not wish to share power with the people or with the uh, local municipalities. They're moving the Bob Cajun Library against the wishes of the people. That's one thing they do and they're closing community libraries that have been around for over a hundred years. That is what that administrative core have done. And there is not one single positive thing that they have done which could not have been done by our branch librarians and in fact was always was done by them. We could open and run a, sm a small community library for what it costs to pay the CAO. I think that that would be a much better use of our money. Thank you.